your in-depth look at local news. ABC 6 News at 630. Right now in this half hour, the nation is making significant strides when it comes to understanding what risks are men and women in uniform face. It's a push for not only a safer life, but a healthier one as well. Plus, local students taking the reins and building a better community. And it's definitely getting some nice recognition. But first. Today, my administration is launching the most sweeping action in history to lower the price of prescription drugs for the American people. President Trump making a speech on drug prices today and what he says he is not going to tolerate any longer. President Trump unveiled his new plans to help lower pharmaceutical drug prices for Americans, but some are saying he is going back on a promise. During his campaign, one of his key promises was to allow Medicare to negotiate directly with drug companies to lower prices. Now he's saying that the plan includes cutting out the middlemen who pocket rebates and discounts. The American people deserve a health care system that takes care of them, not one that taxes and takes advantage of our patients and our consumers and our citizens. If the plan goes through, consumers in the end will win. I'm happy to introduce you to Seth Denson, who is a healthcare industry expert, but also, Seth, you do so much more. You even consult our lawmakers on, as they're considering different policies when it deals with prescription drugs, which has been in the news a ton. Before we get into all of that and the president's plan and where things are moving to, I want people to know a little bit about your background and kind of how you got to be in the role that you're currently in. Sure. So I spent a number of years in the health insurance industry. I've worked for national corporate health insurance companies in field underwriting and in sales and then from a, for a national uh, health insurance brokerage firm. And then that's when uh, my colleagues uh, like to jokingly say I had my Jerry Maguire moment. Uh, my kids call it my unlikely Lorax moment. Uh, in that started really looking at the overall healthcare system and all of the areas in which it was broken and how it was complex and how the system really feeds off of itself to keep it complex. I, I jokingly used to say that I was no better than a drug dealer uh, as an insurance broker and, uh, and business was good. And, and the insurance companies were the drug and they would pay me a lot of money to keep my mouth shut and just continue to go about the status quo. And so our firm and what we do now is really try to bring complete transparency and understanding and education around the real movement within the healthcare system of what's going on uh, behind the scenes, kind of to say it differently, how the sausage is made and where the money goes, because we feel that at the end of the day, a consumer that really understands what's going on in the marketplace and what the motivators are for not just the doctors, but hospitals, pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies, they can become a better consumer and navigate the system in a more effective way. Well, Seth, break this down for people who, uh, I'm gonna use the EpiPen as an example because sure. that EpiPen, uh, kids need it, grown-ups need it to save their lives in an emergency and it is hundreds of dollars and people can't afford it. It is, and you know, Alex Azar, the Home uh, Health and Human Services Secretary, mentioned not specifically the EpiPen today and his statements during the White House briefing, but more specifically the the structure by which that pharmaceutical company that was bought that had that and bought their competition and shut them down, right, and then raised the prices. And that's what we see a lot in this lack of antitrust law involvement. It's interesting that the federal government really tries to control monopolies, but when it comes to healthcare. Uh, they've really taken a step back and not engaged as much. And, and what we see is, is, is pharmaceutical companies, just like we're seeing hospitals do, they're buying up the market share and they're controlling it. And the federal government has not gotten involved very much to this point. And when they have, the fines imposed have been fractional compared to the amount of profits earned by these companies that are really squashing the competition within the marketplace. Well, the president has said that these uh, prescription drug companies are getting away with murder. He wants to change that. That's the whole premise of this plan. Uh, how confident are you that he's going to stick to the, the fact? Does he have that kind of power, Alex? Or does he have that kind of power, Seth? And if he does, um, is there going to be much change? 
Yeah, I, I, I like to think that I'm an eternal optimist, right? And and there are certain things that the president can do under executive order. It, it, it's really kind of gray on some of the things he can and can't do from a how much he's going to have to go to Congress to get done from a legislative perspective. But, you know, there is no doubt that executive orders have a lot of weight and the president has the ability to to start to demand more. I've said it for a long time where I'm not a fan of the government getting into health care from a business perspective, because, you know, in the, in the United States, we have a free market system, which has provided the most innovation of surrounding health care throughout the world. The, other, the rest of the world relies on us. But what the federal government should do is much like they do uh, with roads and highways, right? Mm -hmm. I can buy a car that drives 200 miles an hour, but they're not going to let me drive it 200 miles an hour. And so in the same way, the federal government needs to get more involved in regulating uh, the overall pricing structure and, and, and how companies control markets and raise prices. They also, and this was mentioned today, can get involved in how foreign markets are accessing the U.S. government or the U.S. products. And then finally, the FDA has really limited foreign markets ability and testing that's done in foreign markets from coming into the United States. And we can't buy drugs, let's say, from Canada, mm -hmm. right, where there may be lower cost options. And those are really prohibited for the most part in the United States. So these are things that under executive order, the president does have the power to do. I'm optimistic that he will. And if he's able to accomplish these things, we absolutely should see a, a lower all a uh, cost uh, uh, specifically around prescription drugs. Okay, do, do you think that he's gonna get much uh, pushback from lawmakers because, as you had said, so the diseases don't have a financial stake uh, in this, but so many people do, including lawmakers. That's right, you know, it was mentioned today in, in, uh, from the Rose Garden when he was speaking that uh, you know, that the, the, the lobby, the big pharma lobby is the largest single lobby in Washington, uh, giving more money to campaigns. Uh, and, and so is he gonna hit some resistance from lawmakers? I gotta think he would, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, these, there are a lot of lawmakers that have received a lot of money and there's a lot of investment. And these companies don't make that type of investment unless they feel like they're able to get some control and some power. So yeah. I would fully expect uh, these the, the lobby to lean on this. And and by the way, while the, the conversation today was mostly around pharmaceutical companies and PBMs, a lot of people don't know prescription benefit managers, which are the main distributors of drugs. So it, again, if I'm, if I'm getting my drug through an insurance program, uh, I am going to use my insurance card when I go to the pharmacy. And that drug was actually, the price was negotiated by a middleman called a PBM. Three PBMs in the United States control 85% of all distribution. Mm -hmm. Three P Those three PBMs are all linked to insurance companies. They're owned by insurance companies. So when we talk about the pharmaceutical lobby, Let's also not forget that we have this entire healthcare lobby too yeah. that is that is wants the system to stay the way it is because profits have never been higher than they are today. That is just sad and we are paying in more ways than one. Seth, I appreciate your time and your insight on this. Thanks for having me on. All right, thanks.